Yo, welcome back to Alpha Omega University. I appreciate you guys. It's a new day. It's a new week. We got to start off strong. All right. Uh, listen, the last two episodes, we were uh, doing um, the the uh, the tank videos, right? We were doing tank videos. We were watching uh, clump tanks. We were watching uh, disengaged tank, right? Uh, we're going to be looking at other tanks as well, I believe. In the schedule let's see let's pop it up real quick let's pop it up real quick uh what's the next step no no no, no, no. we're done with tanks we're going into uh dps that's right dps we're gonna be doing dps ranged first on friday and then on saturday we're gonna be doing a uh, melee dot right uh melee damage over time dps so that's the next two episodes all right uh but because we did do two videos back to back of tank i wanted to have the vod review today be on tanks all right uh it's gonna be two specific types of tanks two two disengaged tanks right because uh clump tank i think it's it's a lot more straightforward than uh disengage okay it doesn't mean that it's easier don't get me wrong i'm not saying it's easier definitely not easier but um but more straightforward right you know what to expect with clump tanks in general things like that okay um so so disengaged tank is a lot more versatile you got to worry about more things out there uh, you got to figure out more things in, in general, right? So we got two videos up today to review. All right. Um, we have the, the first video is going to be this one here uh, with Big Honkers. Uh, but uh, Big Honkers, if you guys don't know who he is, uh, he's a really funny guy. He's a, he's, a, he's a really funny guy. I met him back in uh, uh, when I was in Take Care back in like season 15 or season 16. I can't remember. Uh yeah, he's, he's, he's funny. He's real funny. He gets really into it, man. He gets really into it. So I'm letting you know now, right, right now, guys, that first video we're going to watch with Big Honkers, uh, you know, sometimes he gets real excited and, and, and just just yells real loud, right? So I'm just I'm just letting you guys know. Okay, there's going to be a couple of them. Uh, but he, he kind of stays pretty toned down to his normal uh, in, in, the, in this video. So it's okay. Um, now, this first video... Oh, by the way, both videos today are going to be on the East server. They're both videos from the East server, okay? Um, I didn't intentionally pick videos for the East server this time around. They were just two very good videos that came out this last week from the East server. They, they just happen to be good ones for, for tanks and for review purposes. So uh, it just happened to be. Like I'm telling you guys, man, like the, the East server is, is, is coming up more and more. Their fights are getting better. Uh, so, so you know, it, it's good to be reviewing stuff from from what's going on over there as well, right? Their gear's just a, like a little bit lower tier usually, but like for the most part, it's pretty much the same at this point, man. Like it's pretty much a whole different uh, server that's exactly the same as 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 the regular one, right? So, so essentially, uh, the tactics there, tactics in the main server, at the end of the day, the tactics are going to be the same, right? Um, or how you should use and employ the tactics, what is good and what is bad, should be the same on both sides. Um, the second video, I'm going to show it to you guys right now, uh, real quick here. It's, uh, this guy, Kenma00, um, Kenma00. So, oh, I didn't tell you guys, uh, the, the, the one with big honkers, he's going to be using bedrock. Sorry. I didn't tell you guys that he's going to be using bedrock mace and then, uh, Kenma00, he's in a guild, uh, called Burmese legacy. Right. Um, and the, they, they are going to be, he's going to be running heavy mace. Okay. Um, this is a shorter video. This one's a five minute video. So we're going to be going through the longer one, which is, uh, the big honkers video. Now with the big honkers video, it is multiple different fights. Okay. They all happened around the same time, but essentially it was like they fought and then they, they kind of stopped fighting and then they fought and they stopped fighting. So it was like back and forth. Right. So, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna jump around. It's gonna look like it's totally different fights. And, it, and, and some of them are totally different fights. Uh, but, but in general, I mean, you know, we can see and we can see enough to to review it and learn from it. All right. As always, if anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the chat. And it doesn't have to be about something we're looking at right now. It could be about anything. You got any question about anything? Uh, if you scroll down, the Discord is below on Twitch, and you can you can uh, you can get on the Discord. I'm always available for questions there and discussions there. Always, always, always. Uh, yeah, if you like the content, make sure you guys follow subscribe if you want to you don't have to subscribe the content is free and it will always stay free because uh i want to make sure that you guys get the content get the uh you know get better get better that's the goal right i want you guys to get better but uh the subscriptions obviously help me so if you if you can i would appreciate it. if not it's all good 
Uh, but either way, drop a follow if you if you like the content. So anyway, without further ado, we're gonna we're gonna get into it. All right. I don't want to waste too much time. Now it does take me a minute all the time. I need a second here. Uh, by the way, my I'm I'm uh, I'm a little I'm a little burnt. Uh, brain brain fog, man. All right. So yeah, y'all are gonna have to bear with me. I, I've been doing uh I've been writing essays and shit for school. It's been it's been fun. All right, it's been fun. So I, I literally just half an hour ago I was like deep into an essay and everything, man. So you guys are just gonna have to bear with me. It is what it is. But you know what? We keep it rolling. We keep it rolling. All right. So this video, um, it starts off with some castle fights. Um, they're gonna come in from the north. The enemies inside the castle on the south. Uh, for a, for what I see, for the most part. QWER here, the guild that Big Honkers is in, they tend to be either about the same even numbers or they tend to be a little less uh, in, in numbers than their opponents, okay? So here their opponents are inside the castle and they're going to try to catch them before they go in. So let's get it started. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I, I still got that cough, man. It's a little bit. It's like very small now. It's very small, but it's still there. All right, I'm gonna keep it going. Oh, three, two, one. Jump the ice. 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 Oh, by the way, you're gonna be hearing like planes and and cars and and dogs barking at each other and stuff. Like, I mean, that's just in the video. It's not, it's not outside. Don't take off your headphones. Look around behind you. Anyway, right here. So what he, he goes in, right? He's going in and he goes in and, 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 and I don't know what he's using his E here for. Hold on. Okay, 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 okay. So here he uses his Judy, right? He uses Judy Helm. He's trying to catch people. He knows that they're trying to catch people. Honestly, though, like he wasn't really in position. Like who was he going to hit? One guy, two guys, three guys, maybe, right? At most. It's not worth it. What he should have done, he's getting kind of impatient here. Okay, like he sees things happening. He just wants to be helpful. But sometimes, this is what I was I was trying to explain in the last two episodes, right? Sometimes the best course of action is just to literally relax and, and, and just, just don't waste your cooldowns, right? Because now when he's walking southeast here, he could use his his uh his Judy Helm over here and it'll be much more effective. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like right there, right? Use his pop, boom, his, his Judy Helm. As soon as the uh, Great Arcane will pop, He's right there. He, pop, he he uses Judy Helm, right? Now, this clump's going to get deleted regardless, okay? But it's not about whether the clump gets deleted or not. That's that that's definitely not what matters. Um, what matters is that is that he becomes useful. That that there's something that he's doing, okay? That that is actually causing him to be useful when the in the fight itself, okay? Oh, give me a second here. So I I got some troubles today, man. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'm gonna bring it back. All right. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I have no idea what he's using his E for. <clears throat> I, I really don't. Like, I, 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 I have no idea what he just used it on. Hold on. Oh, thank you, 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 I don't understand because a bedrock, like, by the way, like this is like, if he's actually trying to hit the clump with his E, yeah, like that's the worst thing you could ever do with a bedrock, right? The reason nobody lets players in their guild play bedrock is because of this shit right here. Had he hit that bedrock properly on that clump, oh my God, he would have saved every single one of those enemies. Oh no, he hits it back. There it is. He hits it back. Again, I have no idea what you're doing here. Like, again, don't use things. Don't just use things randomly, okay? Like, that's very, very important. Don't just use things randomly. If anything, like, walk down here southeast and make sure these guys over here on the southeast don't, don't try, like, all of these guys down here, make sure these guys don't try to uh, save the group that you're clumping and killing, right? Like, at least that way you're being useful. But, like, uh, hitting these guys back, like, Ah, I don't like it's so risky, is what I'm saying. Like it's it's so risky. Uh Bohardi saying maybe he was trying to do TC style where you bop away all the heals and supports. Yeah, but he's bopping them into your into his own Zerg, right? So like he's over here and he bopped it he bopped it northwest. Look, I'll show you. It's like he was here and it and it actually it's going northwest this way, right? So I 
I don't know. I like it just doesn't make any sense. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? I'm giving this guy a lot of benefit of the doubt because Big Honkers is a good player. Okay, he is a good player. It's not like he's not like a, a random shitter that like has no idea, no clue what he's doing, right? Um, so yeah, maybe that's what he's trying to do. But honestly, never, never do this, especially not so close to the clump, because if you happen to make the mistake of hitting that clump with that bedrock, you literally just saved everybody. Because your Zerg is gonna dump on this circle, right? But if you bump everybody in different directions, then you're gonna save them from that circle. Because your Zerg can't, like think about a DPS player, right? The DPS player is coming in, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna hit this, right? But then it's like last minute, he's coming in, he's coming in, and last minute, this guy gets bumped over there. He's like, oh shit, now I gotta run this way, right? And then he staggers the damage and he doesn't actually end up getting anybody, right? So it's super important for Bedrock. Like that is the number one most important critical piece of playing Bedrock that I can teach you guys is do not ever use your E near an enemy clump that your Zerg is engaging. Ever, ever, ever. So here he's walking in and he's looking southwest. It's fine because there's a lot of enemies down here southwest, right? And he doesn't know if these guys are going to pop over. However, you have to be very fast in, in reading the enemy as a disengaged tank, okay? L look at this. This guy right here, he's mounted. This guy right here, he's mounted. This guy right here, mounted, 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 right? That means that you only have one, two people, three people right here. This guy's mounted as well. Three people that are actually dismounted on this southwest angle, okay? Now, on the other side, you have dismounted, 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 right? Uh, th oh, no, that guy's mounted. Dismounted, dismounted, right? You got a lot of people dismounted to the southeast. So if I were him, instead of walking and worrying about this angle, I would actually walk southeast and make sure I cover this east side, right? Also, another thing is, and, and I, I want details to really, really pay attention here, okay? If you're one of the first people to walk in, this is a choke, right? So you're one of the first people to cross this choke. You need to cover the far side. Why? Because you need to let the other people that are slower, the other D tanks that are slower, to go and cover this side, okay? You need to cover the far side so that by the time you're covering the far side, the guys that were slow are now covering the short side, okay? Unless you see the enemies about to engage you, then just, you know, cover whatever the engage is, right? But if you have time, like right now you have plenty of time, you can tell. Just go and cover the far side. It's it's much better. Always, always much better. Yeah, like right here. See, again, this is like he's using wind wall right here, right? He's using wind wall right there, right? It's like, I, I like there are a lot of things that we're going to see in these two videos. And the reason I picked these two videos is because a few of the videos that we've watched and reviewed have have been very uh, minimal in the amount of mistakes, right? I've, I've purposely chosen some better videos. From players okay so today i wanted to make sure i chose videos that had significant amount of mistakes that we can point out okay that way we can learn from them even more so this right here he's using his 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 uh his wind wall right to push people northeast here now i assume that wasn't his intention i assume he's just trying to block them from getting across this 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 uh this gate right to try to like basically like this guy here uh, i think i saw there's another red there's another red there's another red right so i think he's trying to make sure that his zerg up here can kill these guys okay free kills right i understand the mentality here i i do and, and it's so tempting to do this right here it's so tempting to do this don't do it don't 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 do it ever 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 and the reason for it is because right now what you're doing is you're blocking this but these guys look down here they're all dismounting now, right? Except for two of them that are still mounted, but the rest of them are still are dismounting. You got people dismounted up there on the tower, okay? So you don't know if the enemy is about to try to come in and flood you. Now, I want you guys to pay attention. Remember, I've told you guys many times the last week or so, we have focused so much on cycling cooldowns, right? Put put attention to this, right? The Q doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, it matters, but like it, it's always going to be up, generally speaking. But the W is, got, is, is not up right so you don't have the w the e is not up so you don't have the e okay the the judy helmet which is another one that you can use for cc is also not up right so essentially the only skill you have up for disengage right now if the enemy chose to to hit you and your zerg right now the only thing you have available to you to defend your zerg is this and you're gonna go and use it aggressively 
That's a big risk. That's a big risk because suddenly you're going to basically allow the enemy to come in and there's nothing you can do about it. If the enemy engages right now, there's literally nothing you can do about it. And as a disengaged tank, that's that's terrible. Your job is to make sure you always are ready for the enemy. And right here, he's not, right? So cycle your cooldowns. Be smart with your cooldowns. Look at that. The enemy's coming in, right? Because he stayed channeling out there. He didn't know what was happening. Right? He stayed channeling down there. He, he didn't have eyes on the far east. He didn't have eyes on the south. And he didn't have eyes on the northwest. So essentially, what he did is, instead of being a disengaged tank, he's now acting like an engaged tank. Because he's trying to secure kills. That's not your job as disengaged tank. Focus on your job. Right? Because right now, where he's standing, he could actually pop a wind wall right here. And by the way, I literally watched this video one time. Okay, so I don't remember all the things. We're literally watching it together right now. And I'm just commenting on the things that are happening. Okay, so what I'm saying is like the things that I'm saying are happening and, and potential issues. I'm not saying it because I know there's something going to happen in, in the next five seconds of the video. I, I don't remember. Okay, what I'm saying is that these are the things that are happening because he's making these mistakes. And this is why you need to anticipate these issues. You need to anticipate getting flanked as a disengaged tank. You need to always anticipate, right? So right here, he can win while these guys back west, right? Or if he had better position, he can position himself a, a little farther west and stop them back here, right? But instead, he has nothing. Now he barely has his E up, right? Uh, his W is still down, so he can't even get in position. So watch watch how useful he becomes here. Okay, he popped the gig and he popped the sprint. He's done nothing though. He's literally done nothing yet. It doesn't matter that the enemy Zerg didn't do any damage. It doesn't matter. Remember, it doesn't matter if you get kills and it doesn't matter if the enemy engages or gets kills or not. It matters if you did your job, if you were useful. And here he wasn't useful at all in this entire engage. Now he snare charges forward. Let's watch that again, right? Let's watch that again. He snare charges into here, right? I mean, how many people is he really rooting? Two, three, four at most? And it's not even like a big clump. It's not even like there's no purpose to this route. There's literally no purpose to this route other than, other than he sees this guy low and he wants to make sure he roots him to kill him. And I can promise you that's probably his, his, his idea here, that he wants to make sure he secures this kill. Okay. Now, regardless of the fact that this guy is wearing uh, um, Claire Cow, right? It doesn't matter. I mean, he's going to survive. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Even if you secured the kill, is what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. You wasted a, a CC that is extremely useful for this engage, and you wasted it on trying to get one kill. Again, he's acting as an offensive tank as opposed to as a disengaged tank. That's the problem. I keep saying it over and over and over. Focus on your job, right? Focus on your job at all times. All right, so now we're switching to another another video. I think they just went around. It's the same fight. I think they just went around and and now they're they're on the east side of the Terry from the from the south side. So here, this is a this is a, a big issue. You see what he did? And I tell you guys this all the time. I call this dancing. Okay, um, I, I know a lot of other people call it different things, like like just whatever, right? I, I call it dancing. Okay, this is what dancing is. You see how he's walking? He's walking northwest, and then he goes and turns around south, and then goes and turns around back north. That right there is dancing. Okay, let's watch it again, and I'll tell you guys why it's important in a second. Watch, he's walking north. He's walking north. He's still doing fine. Turns around. Boom. Right? Terrible. Don't, don't do this. Don't, don't, don't do this. This is the biggest micro habit that everybody in the game has before they, you know, get more experienced in the game. Okay? But even people who are experienced still do it. Obviously, like Big Honkers. He's experienced. He still does it. See that? And now he gets caught in this ring and he's even more slowed. Look at that. Look how useless he is, right? Now the enemy is engaging. 
from down here, they're going to engage here, right? Who's going to get caught in that? Well, Bing Hawkers is right there, right? Now, had he been faster, had he not done this back and forth shit, he would have actually just walked straight on northwest and he would have stood over here somewhere. He would have been able to stop most of this. Right? And it's very easy to be like, oh, no, 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 that's too much. He wouldn't have done that. Of course he would have. Watch, I'll show you again. So he's walking at this speed, right? Look, there's nobody stopping him. Oh, wrong one. Hold on. There's nobody stopping him, right? Like, he can literally walk all the way through here, right? Nobody's stopping him to do it yet. Now he's walking north and the ring gets popped. He would have gotten slowed by the ring. But now he would be slowed in the ring, right? And now he'd be getting almost out of the ring. He'd be somewhere over here by now. He's stuck in the ring. He would he would definitely make it to this position, right? At, at the minimum. And that's it. That's if he took a really slow way to get there. He would be there. And that right there, he's at the corner of the choke. He's able to, to snare charge west and stop them from engaging. Instead, he's far back. And all because he danced one time one time is all that like literally all the possibilities he had in being useful in this one engage it all went to hell because he danced one time and there are some of you guys that literally spend the entire cta dancing on the field i promise you guys you guys think you don't go ahead and record yourselves you guys you guys are gonna watch yourselves you're, you're gonna be out there like fucking th that that's in the mu to the music and shit like i'm telling y'all Okay, uh, Yama says facts. This is how I get one shot a majority of the time. Yeah, I mean, when you're dancing back and forth, right? Like the, the enemy also sees you dancing. So they know that you're not moving. You're basically not moving. You're basically immobile. So it makes you for easy target. Now, see how he did try, right? He did try to get his snare charge in. Uh, kudos for that. But it's too late. So he gets caught in it. I told you guys he was going to get caught in it, right? Even if he didn't snare charge, he was going to get caught in it. No matter what he did, he was going to get caught in it. And instead of him, and I and I mentioned this as well when I was talking about clump tanks, right? Specifically for clump tanks, I was talking about this, but it also works for, for disengaged tanks as well. Um, I was talking about this when I said that essentially, if you're not helping and doing your job, then at least get the fuck out of the way. And the reason is, is because if you're in the way and you get caught in the clump, you're adding to the enemy's escalation damage on you, right? You're making that escalation damage on you guys even, even worse. So you're actually making it easier for the enemy to kill your guys. Simply because you had shit positioning, right? It, it's, it's so simple to make sure you do the right things and not, you know, second guess yourself on whether or not you should go forward or back. Just commit. Commit to the decisions you make. Stop dancing around, right? Especially if you're a disengaged tank. You have to be at the front. Always, always. Now he pops sprint. Or actually, I think he popped it earlier, but he's trying to run west, right? He got a cleanse. They, they got saved. But again, none of this matters. He failed at his job. Now he uses he uses his, his uh, Judicator helmet, and I don't mind it too much. I mind the location of it. It's not great. He should have walked up a little bit more and done it up here, a little bit to the west, right? Um, but it's okay. It's not that bad. What I mind about this Judy helmet is the timing. He should have waited maybe one extra second to pop it. Why? Because look, I explained this uh, the other the other time when we were talking about disengaged tanks, right? This guy's looking northeast, right? Um, this guy's looking northeast. This guy's looking west. This guy's looking west. Uh, fuck, I can't see. There's a big horde of people here. But all of these people are looking east. They're bombing, actually. They're actually clapping right now, right? That entire area. Okay, that's the Siege Post Squad, okay? So, here's the thing. He can't stop this Siege Post Squad because the Siege Post Squad is most likely running face scale hat, okay? Um, or if they're not running, I mean, he it, technically the, this Judy is, a, is an interrupt, right? So, or, or a stun. So, it's not gonna, they're not gonna get through. So, they're not gonna be able to stop him. It's okay. But what he should do is he should anticipate that this large group over here is going to counter engage. Okay. He should anticipate that. Obviously. Okay. Now you can say, oh, but they just engaged. Well, this is where I tell you guys that you guys need to learn how to read the enemy because they did engage. Yeah, you're right. They did engage. 
But let's let's look back at the engage and let's look at how many people actually engaged. All right, here they come, right? I see one tank, two, three, four, five, six, uh, maybe seven. Let, let, let's say seven for now. All right, yeah, yeah, that did, that tank did go in, seven, right? And then we have one more here, eight. Right over here, this guy right here, he's casting eight people. That's about it. I see eight people engaging. I mean, I, again, I may be off on my count. Let's add five more fucking people to that count. Let's say 13 people engage. Let's say I'm just really bad at math. 13 people engage. Okay, great. You know what that it tells me? That's a party, right? Because who's not going to engage? Well, the supports. I mean, like a like a like a like an enigmatic is usually not going to engage with them, right? Or at least you won't see them walk up there. Like they're going to channel their E from a distance, you know, something like that. So what does this tell you about this engage? Right? What does this tell you about this engage? This engage is a one party engage, which means what? It's a bait engage. Another way you can tell, I mean, you're, I don't expect all of you guys to just sit there and count like, oh, that's one, that's two, that's three, right? Like, <laughs> come on, you gotta be fast, right? So what you can do, and this is what I personally like to do, is I like to judge based on how much damage they put out, okay? And I also like to judge on another thing here. If there's a gap, then that usually means it's a bait. Learn that one, okay? That one's a very, very big telltale sign. I promise you guys. I promise you it, it, it is very effective, okay? I use it all the time, all right? If I see a gap, if I see a gap between the Zerg that's engaging and the Zerg that is not, that nine times out of 10, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bait, okay? Because it's not enough people where they're all running together and filling up the gap, right? But you can also look at the damage. Let's look at the damage. Two, one, body, body, body. So right there, look, that's a little bit of damage. See that? It's like, what, like 20% damage on all that group? Okay, and you can say, oh, well, we have good healers and support. I don't care what you have. You're gonna take more damage if, the, if it's a full engage. You know you're fighting against like, what is this, like 100 people, right? You know you're fighting a big ass fight. They're gonna take more damage than that. There's no way. So you know it's a bait. So you should know that the enemy is gonna try to counter with their full engage, okay? Because you're full engaging, okay? You're taking the bait. Your, sir, your, your caller did for whatever reason. So then give it a second. Walk up a little bit closer. Give it a second so that you can get a better, a better, um, Judy helmet off. Now, this is a, another thing, another problem here. Look, he uses his Judy helm, right? And it was too early. He popped right here. You see that, that line? He popped that bedrock, okay? And now he's running southeast. Like he literally goes, does a little bit and gets out. Like, ah, I gotta, I gotta go be safe. I gotta, I gotta run away. No, 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 no. Your job as a disengaged tank is not done until your Zerg is safe. I don't care if it means you're throwing auto attacks on the enemy because you have no cooldowns. I don't care. Your job as a disengaged tank is to place yourself between the enemy and your Zerg and literally just make it as annoying as possible. What he's doing is he's pulling out so quick, but look at his Zerg. They're all still there. So he's pulling out before his Zerg does, when he still has something to disengage with, right? Boom, that wind wall. He puts a wind wall right here, right? Beautiful wind wall, it forces people to go around or use a night helm, right? Now the E is not terrible, but the E is still a little early. But I don't blame him for the E. I think the E was okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. The Judy Helm was a little bit subpar. It definitely could have been a little better. But his playstyle in general here is terrible because he's running away before his Zerg even does. Right? Don't do this, disengaged tanks. Don't do this. It's better off if you stay up here and do your job. Look, look, he's full HP. See, he's full HP. He's totally safe, but his Zerg lost so many people up there. <laughs> look, I love seeing the Siege Bowls, man. I love seeing Siege Bowls everywhere. I told you guys it would happen, man. Siege Bowls amazing. Uh, we got, we got, we got something in the chat. Hold on. Yo, Dex, what's up, man? He said, don't care if you even died, but save your Zerg. We used to do it a lot. Yeah, it's true. You got to save your Zerg, man. Or give it time. Yeah, that's what I was trying to explain. Is like you got to give it time. You get, give it a second. Give it give it a couple seconds just to see what happens. It's better than you die than twenty of your friends. Absolutely, and that usually is the case, right? 
with this engaged tank, you have to know that you're going to you're gonna sacrifice yourself very often, man. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I sacrifice myself all the time as a disengaged tank. But it's your job, right? It doesn't matter who you are or how good a player you are. At the end of the day, as a disengaged tank, your job is to sacrifice yourself for your Zerg. Three, two, one. So now the Zerg is engaging. They're counter-engaging here, right? And he is completely worthless right now. He's literally debuffed right now. Because he's not even helping snare charge the enemy. He's not getting in position to counter their next engage. He's just all the way in the back doing nothing. Now, listen, I do this sometimes. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be completely, completely transparent with you guys. I do this sometimes. Where, yeah, sure, maybe I'm full HP, but I'm just going to sit back and chill. Okay? But there's a big difference. The times that I do it is because I don't have my defensives up. Okay, and if I don't have my defensives up, then there's no reason for me to risk myself up there because I'm going to be useless anyway. Okay, but he has his gig pot up this entire time. Right, he has his gig pot up. So there's no reason he should be where he's at right now. There's no reason. Yeah, another 20 of his friends died. Now he's sprinting forward. Let's see what it does. All right, now he finally got into the enemy. Beautiful. This is good. This is good. He's where he needs to be. All right, he's snare charging. I Because, okay, look at this, right? Remember I told you, learn how to read the enemy, okay? This is very important. I always tell you guys, you guys got to learn how to read the enemy. Look at this guy right here. Walk, looking northeast. Look at this guy. Looking northeast. Look at this guy. Looking northeast. Look at this guy. Looking northeast. Right? Almost every single fucking guy in this group, except for like the guys over here who are the bomb squad. Okay? But everybody else is looking northeast. I mean, this group is kind of just far back. But everybody else, like if you really look, this entire chunk of people, right? They're all looking northeast. Right? So that's my point. Is that right now they're all trying to go and move towards your Zerg. It doesn't matter if they're actually going to hit you right now. It doesn't matter. What he did was actually a good play because he's limiting the enemy mobility. It's actually going to buy one second, two seconds of extra time for his Zerg, for these guys down here to walk southeast and get safe. Now, he uses his bedrock here. Um, I, I don't... I don't, I don't really like the placement of that. I'll tell you the truth. I would have preferred a bedrock across like this, right? To, to position yourself here and hit them northwest. Why? Why? Because think about this. If, if, if this guy right here, let's just say this guy right here, okay? If this guy was a ranged DPS, he could technically come down here and bomb over wall, right? Or he can technically come over here and bomb across this way, right? Over the wall this way, okay? So therefore... It, you want him as far away as possible, and north would be farther from your Zerg. Don't treat enemy range DPS as, as melee DPS. They're not all the same. Sometimes just blocking the choke as well is, is a good option, right? Just block the choke for a second, okay? Um, it's not bad. It's not bad, but really, I mean, he doesn't hit much many people here. He really doesn't, right? Now, granted, they are using Night Helms, so... Um, and there's one thing I noticed about East Server. They use a lot more Night Helms than West. Right? So they, they're, they're doing it right over there. Now he uses Knight, knight Armor here. I mean, I, I, I explained this last time. I'll explain it again. Right? If you have a wall, try to use your Knight Armor to, to help that wall. Because look, this guy right here, let's say this guy wants to go over there to over here. Right? He wants to go uh, northeast. Okay? All right. So when, what he's going to do, he's just going to go, oh, I can't go through there. I'm going to go around this way. Or if for some reason he wants to go the other way, he can go the other way, right? Whereas if he were to block, say here, somebody over here can't go around this way, right? He has to go the other way. So you actually force everybody, if you actually add your wind wall to a literal wall, right? What you're going to force is this guy is going to have to walk this way. While the, the, a guy standing over here is also going to walk this way. And a guy standing over here is also going to walk this way. So what you're doing is you're forcing them to clump here. So if you're channeling your wind wall here, you're going to be standing somewhere here, right? So channel your wind wall. And when you see them all clumping, let me let me redraw this. And your wind wall is right here. You're going to be standing here. When you start seeing them all clump over here in this area, then you snare charge this area. Right? That's how you use your skills 
to work in synergy with each other right you're not just throwing skills this is what big honkers is doing right now he's just throwing skills don't just throw skills have a good reason for each skill to be used play each each skill off of each other now he he what, what, what did he just oh no he put a, he put a silence that silence pool by the way a lot of people don't use the the the, the q often for any any weapon, by the way, any weapon, and uh, Big Honker is actually using his Q quite a bit. That's actually really good. Okay, and this is a good position for it. Remember, I tell you, like, put things where you want to have like a wall extension, right? The wall is right here, and he put it right here. Now it's not. I mean, people can go around this way, fine, but like at least it's in a corner, right? Putting putting a, a silence Q on a corner is always good because people are usually gonna have to walk through it. All right, so this is very good placement. So now, look, again, going south, going south, uh, not that guy. This guy's going northeast somehow. This guy's going south, 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 right? All of these guys are going southeast for the most part, right? So he knows an engage is coming, so he snare charges this group. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's gonna, it's gonna buy time, it's gonna help. Now, He's going to have his E up soon. What I would do is, since I'm standing here, I'll walk a few steps southeast, maybe stand over here, and then pop it this way. That way, I cut the wall, right? But I'm also popping them back to the far west, if they get, if they do get knocked back. So instead, he just stood there. Now, why did he stand there? Because he decided to throw a Q instead. Now, a Q here is not as useful as an E going across this way. Right, so give and take. Sometimes it's more important. Instead, he used his E going this way. It's not optimal, and I'll show you why. If I'm somebody here, I can walk around this, just hug the wall, right? If I'm over here, I can go around, and yeah, sure, I'm cut off, and that sucks. But the guys down here, they can go around by hugging the wall to the southeast. Okay, so it's very, very important to always look at angles and 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 try to cut off, uh, try to cut off um, chokes as much as possible. With your skills as a disengaged tank. Come on, come on! I, I'm sorry. I told you guys he was gonna scream. I told you guys he was gonna scream. I gave you guys prior warning. Now look at that. He's backing off when he started getting low, right? Other than that, he was auto attacking and all that, right? Which is great. It's great. You'd be surprised how much auto attacks can help, man, in a fight. Now, the problem is that his Zerg is absolutely fucking pummeled anyway, okay? But, but I mean, he, he was doing his job for the most part. He wasn't doing a great job, but he was doing his job. As soon as he went in and he went deep, he started doing his job. But he before that, he wasn't doing very good at all. Now here he's coming back, right? He's coming all the way south. I I don't I don't know what he's gonna find all the way south southwest over there, like by the courtyard. I don't understand. And now he's typing, he's typing heal, right? And I'm gonna show you guys. I do remember this part about the video. I'm gonna show you guys right now why I absolutely, from the bottom of my heart, hate the the holy healer AOE Q. Why it's absolutely worthless and nobody should be running it. Or maybe one person per party at most. Everybody else should be in the single target queue. I'll show you guys why. Look, he's, he, he needs a heal. Okay, okay. Peggy, Peggy, Peggy. All right, somebody dropped the norb on him. There's a queue, right? Look at that. I, oh, AOE heal. They're so great, aren't they? They're amazing, right? They're amazing. AoE heal. Let's see. Oh, no, never mind. Everybody else got healed except you. Oh, wait, there's another Q. Oh, no. Oh, another Q. Oh, that one got you. All right. Beautiful. Finally. Finally. After three fucking Qs. Right? And, and notice how everybody else didn't really need a heal. Right? And it's like, not granted, Big Honkers didn't need it either. Like, he was fine. But, like, yeah, he, he was asking for it. They were definitely trying to give him heals. That's my point, man. The AOE heal for for healers is 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 so bad because it's so unreliable, especially in situations like these. Okay, um, 
it's a back and forth. There's so many people that argue that it's so great, that it's amazing. Listen, at the end of the day, your job is to heal specific people, yeah? And if you're not healing specific people, then then you're not doing your job as a healer, right? But let's go back to the tanks. There's another one that didn't heal him. Ooh. So here, honestly, I would, like, he got bonked back. I mean, it wasn't fully his fault. Granted, he was farther back, but I didn't mind it, right? I didn't tell you guys that that was bad. Why? Because his, 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 uh, his gig was down, right? You can't go and play like you're unkillable if you don't even have a gig pot up, right? But he did get bonked back. I think it was a bedrock mace that bonked him back. He should use his, his snare charge right now to try to catch up. And it's, it's not something that I will always say like, oh, use your snare charge to catch up. No, 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 no. But every once in a while, it's totally fine. Every once in a while, you should do it because being at the front is your job. And if you're not at the front, you're useless anyway. So you might as well have something on cooldown. Yo, Yavis said it's a, it was a jump scare. I told you, he's gonna do it a few times, bro. It, I just, I told you, I told you. So you use that snare charge forward, right? So the enemy is running. Okay, and he's using his Judy Helm to try to help catch people. I don't mind this. I don't mind this. The enemy's in, in, in retreat right now. However, uh, you know, I wouldn't use everything right now because, because they are kind of clumping here, which means they might try to turn, right? So you might want to keep at least one of these two up, if not both. Uh, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> So he uses uh, so that uh, big mistake, right? He uses his his E to bonk one person back. Again, again, it's it's wasteful. It's wasteful. You don't know what the enemy Zerg is doing, man. You don't know if they're about to turn and just delete everybody, right? You gotta you gotta be ready for it. Now he uses his windmill. It makes it even worse. <laughs> now we don't see it on the video, but what we're about to see, man. It, this needs to be like submitted to like the UN or something for like, uh, you know, war war crimes, some war damages. All right, this is this is pretty bad. This is pretty bad. <laughs> oh, yo! <laughs> I don't know what happened. I like all I see, bro, is a bomb squad down here, right? But the most of his zerg was too far back, so I don't I don't know what happened. I have no idea what happened. Uh, but yeah. Oh, we have... Oh, yeah, yeah, send it to me, send it to me. I'm, we're not going to watch it right now because I have Discord down, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, I'll, I'll watch it later, bro. That's, that's crazy. Chat, let's go! What I'm talking about. I told you, another jump scare. I told you. I think I think they just kind of loot and stuff. I gotta I gotta speed it forward for the next fight. There's another fight. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, they're all looting here. Oh, I north. So put on north, just in case. Nope. Hold on, we gotta get that HD. Never mind. <laughs> nice, they're getting caught. Let's fucking go. That's what I wanna see. I love how he talks himself through it, you know what I mean? Like, this man's like, like, like internalizing the situation, man. I love this, I love this. <laughs> Look, now, this is a big problem, right? And I was going to mention it earlier, but, but I mean, it didn't matter too much. But right now, his entire Zerg is engaging. And, like, he can see nothing. Like, I, I like not even off-screen name tags. You don't even see a single red, man. And it's like, he's just useless right now. If your Zerg is engaging southwest, you should go southwest, right? He's going to end up turning around and looking north just to see, like, if there's anything happening. But, like... That's fine. I, I don't I don't mind that, but 
remember I told you I explained this about you guys, right? Like, look at the blob, right? If you're close to the edge of the blob, then that means that there's most likely nobody behind you, right? He's close to the edge of the blob here. Okay, so so what what he's doing by staying so far back, there's no reason for this. Read the map, read the enemy. And right now he's not reading the map and he's not reading the enemy because he can't even see the enemy. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Come back. Come on, come back. Yeah, come back. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. See, he's trying to read the map. He's trying to think maybe they're going to come behind us. I don't know. I mean, I don't speak their language. So maybe they're saying like they're getting flanked or maybe they're going to get flanked or they saw somebody rotating. Maybe if you guys speak the language, let me know if they said anything like that. But um, either way, I just don't think what he's doing is right right now. Like here's another engage. Now he pops a sprint, and I'm okay with him being late because he's not an engaged tank. But he needs to get up to the front and make sure he's ready for the counter engage. Oh. Right now, there's nothing, right? Oh yeah, okay. It's not open world now. Okay, okay. Look at that. He's internalizing it, right? It's it's funny, but it's really good, right? What did he What did he just say? He just said. He just said, oh, we're going open world now. Okay, okay, right? He's hyped up. I love it. But the truth is, is that he's he's thinking about it, right? He's actually thinking, he's actually thinking like, okay, we're going open world. This means that this is going to be a different kind of fight, right? That's very important. There's so many people that don't ever switch gears, that they're just like fighting a specific way. That's the way they start the fight. That's the way they end the fight. And it doesn't matter how the fight changed. They never adapt, right? And I've told you guys that about callers, right? Callers need to adapt, but also individual players. If the fight is changing, then your play style should be changing with it too. So let's see what he does in open world. So here he sees them coming Southeast. This is important because his Zerg just crossed the choke and, and they're not necessarily uh, ready for this engage because the enemy, look, they got a guy down here, guy down here, guy over here, guy over here, guy over here, guy over here, right? Look at that. It's a perfect fucking line, man, right? And then they got another line, and then they got their back line, right? Now, this guy's kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He's too far forward. I mean, he's a healer. I don't, I don't know what he's up there doing. He should be, like, over here, maybe, if he wants to be, like, a forward healer, right? Either way, my point is they got a straight line here, right? And, and and you know, they're, they're that's kind of like their front line. But on top of it being the front line, I want you guys to instead look at, not look at the Zergs, at the enemy Zergs positioning, but rather the empty space. Look at this empty space right here, right? Empty space right here, right? Look at all this empty space, okay? See all that? There's a lot of empty space all across all this area, empty space, right? Empty space means that it makes it hard for them to get clumped. It also means that they're taking a very big width angle, right? So they're going to walk up north onto them and they are well positioned and your Zerg is not. You need to buy time. You need to buy time for your Zerg to spread out. So he pops this. And again, this is why this is not effective. Okay. This is great. I like that he's using his E, but it's not effective because he's not using it with a wall. Just imagine if he popped it this way right or if he walked over here and then popped it this way okay then when he would cut right from here all the way this way he would cut this entire angle they can't really go around this way they'd have to go northeast and around which means what they will clump over here in this area and that'll give your zerg a chance to engage on them but instead you're popping at them straight ahead which okay sure you're gonna bonk a few people back very far but that's not going to be super useful, okay? You have to angle the bedrock maze appropriately. If you don't want to hit it to a wall, that's fine. I don't blame you. Maybe hit it diagonally, right? Hit it like this as a, as a kind of like a, a diagonal to their movement because they're moving this way, right? So you're still going to cut them off this way. They're going to have to choose to go around one direction or the other. But don't make it easy for them where they're just like, okay, well, look at this guy. He just walks around this way. The next guy's just going to walk down that way, right? They're not going to give a flying fuck. So make it hard for them. Make it a, a, an obstacle. Okay, okay. Oh, now, that Judy Helm, 
is not yes, oh i didn't mean to click it that judy helm was not optimal but it was great it was good like it, it was actually really good right because he's actually stopping this entire group here and they're not going to be able to go around because if we look back i'll show you guys see this right here look this rock they can actually go around and flank okay which is actually really really important okay why because flanking is extremely important to getting an engage off okay now, if they can flank around, that's a problem. So what he's doing is he's using his Judy Helm here. And I don't know if he knows that this is what he did, but this is exactly what he did. Um, by using his Judy Helm here in this area, he's ensuring that these guys that are walking will not have enough time to go all the way around and hit it at the in time, right? They're going to have to, if they want to hit the clump in time, they're going to have to now go the shorter route. They no longer have the extra second or two to go around the rock. That is critical. All right, that is actually really, really good play. Okay, okay. Oh, CP. See that? See how they were walking, right? They were kind of walking towards the rock, maybe even considering going west, and now they're just gonna go straight northeast. See how most of them are starting to go northeast? There's some that still went west, but I promise you, those guys are gonna be late. Now he goes and snare charges over here. Now that's a good one. That's a really good one. Because look how many people he's there charging. And also, another th another tip for disengaged tanks. Don't try to stop their tanks. Let the supports deal with that. Okay? As a disengaged tank, you want to try to stop the enemy backline instead of their front line. So, right here, instead of snare charging this group over here, you snare charge their back line. Why is this important? Because if you snare charge this group, let's say this group is out of the fight for five seconds. Okay? Or well, maybe not five seconds. Let's be more reasonable. Two seconds. All right. Two seconds. Or a second and a half. All right. That means this Zerg is going to engage. And then about a second later, this group is going to engage. Which means what did you do by simply snare charging this group? You effectively staggered their damage so that your Zerg can actually heal it in between each engage. So it's going to be one engage. And then in that second in between, your healers are going to heal the clump. And then these guys are going to engage and you're, everybody's going to survive. This is literally how it happens all the time. This is why it's so important to have disengaged tanks that are that are stopping the enemy before they even get close to the clump to delay them. Now, the wind wall, I didn't really see it. And honestly, they were all night helms, so it didn't really matter too much. Um, I, I don't blame him. At the end of the day, he was just trying to do as much as he could. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, he could have saved it, but... He's not going to need it. This is a full-blown engage. Look at this icicle. <clears throat> Look at that icicle. Look at what they all do. And they all clump. Right? This is exactly what I'm talking about. But you have to do this with literally every single, every single disengaged weapon. Okay? If you had a wind wall here, it would have the same effect. If you had the bedrock maze here, it would have the same effect. Okay? These kinds of things are important. I want you guys to pay attention to this area again. I'm going to bring it back and pay attention to this area again, okay? There's the the, 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 the icicle just got popped, okay? Just got popped. Watch all these guys. Watch every single one of these people. Look at that. Look at that. All the way around, now they're super clumped, right? Because they only have two people that ran through this, okay? This is why icicles are so important. But also, this works for literally any other any other thing that has any sort of slow. Like a Grove Keeper ring, people do this shit on Grove Keeper ring. They, they go around it, right? Um, if you if you do a wind wall there, again, same thing, okay? So this is, the, this is how it works, okay? This is literally, like I'm showing you guys step by step so that you guys understand the, the 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 things that you should try to do at all times look how clumped they are now one guy snare charged here and snare charges 10 people why because they're all clumped it's so easy now he snare charges them again they got snare charged again look at that they still don't move now he uses again he uses his e down here no reason to do that right your zerg is up here so use the, the E this way. You're close to the wall, so fuck it. Use it this way, northeast. 
or use it directly north and block these guys here, right? Don't just balk them back this way. It's not going to help much. Lahat. So now the enemy just engaged and and the, his zerg is about to counter engage. So he goes and 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 roots this area. I don't mind it at all. Why? Because every once in a while, if you can try to help out your zerg while they're engaging, it's useful. Especially if you can get a big clump like this, right? Make sure it stays clumped for an extra second. It's useful. Now here, look at this. He's next to a wall. Wind wall. Boom. Wind wall south. Do it. Your Zerg just engaged. They're backing up. Look, this guy's backing up, right? I don't even need to understand their language. I just know that. I just look at their Zerg and know what they're doing, right? So it's like they're trying to back up. So wind wall this. Wind wall right now would be good. Instead, he pops a sprint and he's running away, I guess. Excuse me. He even pops his he even pops his gig for no reason. And now he's also clumping in his Zerg, right? It's like, you're a D-Tank, do your job, right? <laughs> like, I, I, I can't, I like, I've reviewed a lot of videos uh, in my time playing Avion. I've reviewed so many videos of so many people trying to help them out and trying to get better. The videos that frustrate me the most is disengaged tanks when they do this. When it's like you have a clear cut, good play that you can do, and instead you choose to run away and save yourself. It's 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 so bad because it goes against everything about your role. So he still has the wind wall up. He's still backing up. He has a, a snare charge up now. He's still backing up. Now he's asking for a heal. I, I guess that's the reason he's backing up because he's a thousand HP down. I don't care. I don't care how low you're getting, man. Like your job is is up there, so stay up there. Like you gotta die, die up there. Don't like he's literally at the back of his zerg at this point. Look at that. He missed that AOE Q. You saw that? Fuck it. That AOE Q sucks, man. Why the fuck is he on sandwich? Veneran sir says, um, I don't know. I don't know. What can I say? I don't know. Um, I personally prefer omelet, no matter what. Uh, uh, I, I prefer reduced cooldowns for everything for my entire kit, uh, all the time. It's better than sandwich. It always has been, but you know, some people do like running sandwich because they feel scared that they're gonna get one shotted or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't recommend it. Five, four, three, two, one. Look right there. Like, wind wall here, right? Wind wall here. He uses his E, but it's like, why? Wind wall. Like, wind wall is perfect. Look, there's a rock. Wind wall, right? And instead, he uses his E. And it's like, you're still not using the E optimally. Because even though you're going to bonk these people out, you can still run it. Like, if you stood here and did it this way, you would block that entire angle. Right? But like, I don't know. People just don't do these things, man. They, they, think that, they think that with bedrock, all you should do is hit people back. It's like, not always, man. Not always. Sometimes just hit them sideways, and that's fine too, right? Because it, it gets more done. Like he still has his 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 uh his night armor up, and he's still running. Now he sees this. I honestly like this is not a good position. There's there's no chokes anywhere, right? This is open world as as it gets, right? But look, this guy's here. This guy's here. All these people are right here, right? And they're all walking in the same direction, right? So, put a wind wall. Okay, maybe the wind wall's not that long. Let, 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 let's be realistic. Put a wind wall, right? Why? Because at the very minimum, you're gonna force them to go around a little bit. And why is this important? And where it's not important before? I'm gonna explain to you guys why. So, these guys are coming up, okay? Your Zerg is moving this way. The enemy Zerg is down here. So your Zerg is looking south, even though they're backing up northeast, they're looking south. These guys, if your Zerg engages south, Okay, let's let's redraw this. If your Zerg engages south, they're going to have an open flank to the northwest. And these guys, if they are a bomb squad, which I don't know if they're a bomb squad, but probably. I mean, look, this guy's uh, this guild, this guild, same guild, right? And they're running together, kind of clumped up. I mean, they don't look like a bomb squad, honestly. Like, uh, they look like regular players, to be honest. Like, there's a life curse, I think, and a spirit hunter, I guess, and some, some gloves. I, I, I don't know. But you don't really know what's behind them, right? I know I see other tags, so you don't know. You don't know. Um, 
even if they're a terrible bomb squad, a terrible bomb squad with a great angle is still going to get kills, right? So, um, they can come around here and flank because you're focused down here and flank the side. So, buying one extra second is going to allow your Zerg to kind of declump and spread out. That way, they don't get completely clapped from the flank. Protecting your flanks is extremely important. Use your wind wall just for a second. Bop them back for literally one second and then keep walking. Look, this guy's sprinting. You see that? He's taking that flank. Now, we don't know what happened. The video ended. Whatever. We're starting a new fight. But essentially, that's that's what you can learn from that, that little clip there. Let me, let me catch up on chat. Ava Omelette is perfect for his build. Defense plus the CD. Yeah, Ava Omelette is not bad. I still prefer regular Omelette. Um, I'm just old school, man. I'm just old school. I literally have never switched from 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 port, regular pork omelet since the beginning of the game. I I've always stayed with it. Nothing else. That, that that that's it. I'm just old school. That's all it is. I'm just old school. But yeah, you're right. Ava omelet would work. <clears throat> or Ava sandwich, which gives CC. Uh, Dex says plus health points, but not the regular. Yeah, yeah. I mean, CC is not super important nowadays, Dex, because the CC changes make it make it less significant, right? It's still it's still important, you're right, but it's not as important anymore. In general, it, I prefer Omelet for sure. Like, better cooldowns is always it's always better, in my opinion. All right, let's keep it moving. He didn't even snare charge them. He he let them engage for free. Yeah, he did. He did. He, he, he had cooldowns up. He just wasn't using them. So here they're trying to catch people, right? They're trying to catch people, so it's fine. I don't, again, I don't understand what he's using his E for. I, I'm like, I see, I see a little bit. I think he's using his E backwards again. It's like, dude, just like, this is so, so bad. Yeah, he did use it backwards. Now this wind wall, even though it's offensive wind wall, and I told you guys don't use it that way. It's not terrible because they're actually securing big kills. However, Look at this giant ass group of enemies up there, man. You want to have your 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 shit to look north. You don't you don't you do not want to not have anything cuz look, remember we mentioned this at the beginning of the video, remember? He's that's down, that's down, that's down. Save your last effective, you know, thing. Like he's just blowing everything in one go. And now he has nothing and he's worthless. So he uses snare charge, okay, fine, whatever, I guess. But like, you know, he has nothing else. Like, if he had his wind wall here, he can block this angle here to make sure nobody goes through here between, again, between a tree and between the wall, right? And you guys don't ever, like, a lot of people don't think about this. They, a lot of people, like, think that trees are not obstacles. They're obstacles, man. They're just little ones. So make them into a bigger obstacle by putting a wind wall in between. Oh! Now, he has his E up, and there's a big chunk of enemies up here that did not engage. I would expect them to come down here and engage. So what I would do is I position myself here and wait until they come at me, and I would just use my, use my uh, bedrock right across like this or or even straight back at them at an angle right like if i if i can do something like if i stand here and i do it this way see how i'm extending this wall this way and i'm actually creating a concave right so essentially like that that's what you can do right that's what i would do because i see this group and i don't know i don't know if they're going to engage or not here they come you see that that group is coming now his zerg backed up so he didn't end up needing it he did use his e again man i don't know what this guy uses his e on it's so it's so random why is his judy helmet down yeah because he used it he used it when they try to get the clap on the on the on the group of people to try to secure it he just blew everything at the same time man now this wind wall here is this way i i don't i don't understand it right you have a wall here right you have you have this this rock formation and and the and the, the wall so use your wind wall this way right 
It, they're still going to be able to cut through between this little rock, right? It won't reach, but it's okay. But like doing this, like what what do you what are you what are you doing this for? They're just going to go around this way or go around the other way. It's not going to matter. Again, think about your skills, man. Don't just throw shit out there just because you have it. And by the way, uh, in fairness to Big Honkers, when I said he's a good player, he's a good DPS player. Okay? Um, he sometimes plays disengaged tank, but not not often. Okay? So, like, this is not like his main role. Uh, his main role is, is usually a, a, a DPS burst uh, style player. I don't mind that snare charge. I mean, he's trying to help his Zerg get something done, but then he's just starting to blow everything again, right? So it's like, ah, uh, it's like he's constantly out of cooldowns because he's constantly wasting them. This is what I was telling you guys. Be patient. I'm actually fighting for my life, bro. So now he he he's fine. Now they got a, we got a flank coming in. This is this is like a last second last second thing. He he is in time to snare charge them, and then walk back a little bit, and then and then wind wall them back. He can do that. Now they are night helm, so it might not matter. But the snare charge is gonna get him no matter what, right? If he does it in time. He didn't do it in time. Now he walked himself into a silence, but that doesn't matter. He didn't do it in time. And now he still doesn't do anything. Now, from this position, at least he has a rock here, right? So so stand by the rock, throw the E down this way, and cut off this angle over here. Right? Your Zerg can still walk through it, but their enemy can't. So it gives you guys a little buffer to walk back this way. Nope. Instead, he's using the E this way again, right? Um, at this point, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop reviewing this one because I feel like the mistakes that we're seeing in every subsequent video are the same, right? Like, they're the same exact mistakes, right? Overutilizing his his cooldowns. He's being impatient. Um, he is playing way too defensive as a disengaged tank. And he's not using the terrain as a buffer to his skills, right? So those tend to be the problems that he's having. And they keep on happening over and over and over and over. Uh, Bennett Rancer says, looks like he doesn't understand his job as a peeler. He pressed his ability simply because he has the cooldown to do it. Exactly, 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 right? That's exactly the point. He's just using the cooldowns because he has them up. All right, so... That's the thing that you guys need to understand. And it's not just for tanks, by the way. It's not just for tanks. It's every single role. Okay? There are so many so many uh, roles, so many players that they just throw a Q. They throw a W because they think it doesn't matter. They use their helmet. They use their chest piece because they think it doesn't matter that much. I promise you, every skill matters a lot, man. I promise you, every single one matters a lot. Uh, you can send it on the on the, on the the Discord, Veneranser. Like just scroll down the Discord server is there. You can just post it on on there. Um, but when when I'm I'm not I don't watch any videos that I don't put any videos on the stream that I haven't pre watched. Uh, the the reason for it is because uh, I I don't want I don't want any any TOS words or or just you know bad things to pop up suddenly and 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 screw me over right. So uh, that's just the way I, that's just the way I run things. Um, but if you have a video that I, that you want me to review for you um just drop it in there in the discord and i'll definitely watch it absolutely we'll watch it and then if it's a good video for review i'll review it um at some point in the VOD review series for sure all right so the next video that we're gonna watch is a little shorter this is five minutes no i don't have that i don't have the 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 the, the little bot that does that man i don't honestly i have a bot for the discord i just don't know how to set it up to do that so uh, yeah i I, I think I think it you're from the phone okay I'll send it to you after I'll send it to you after but if you like it's it's on the about you can click on the on the twitch it's on it's on on the about section it's it's in there there's a, it's literally just like the discord link you just click it anyway I gotta keep going gotta keep it going all right so um this next video is only five minutes long okay this is a heavy mace video all right um I didn't watch completely the whole video, so there are some parts that I don't even know. 
um i did watch i did listen to it so that there's no like problems with the video itself but anyway yeah we're gonna watch this one here uh it's gonna be a territory fight by the way and i think they go open world at some point here we go all right, so first, let, 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 let's look before everything starts popping off. Let's look at his kit, right? So he's got the heavy mace, right? And and his skill set is fine. He's got the silence, the snare charge, and the, uh, the, the E, obviously. He's got a demon armor. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Like literally not even a little bit. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Okay, um, if you're a disengaged tank, what are you supposed to be doing while the enemy is engaging? You're supposed to be stopping them, right? If you have a demon armor, when are you supposed to use your demon armor? To reflect the enemy or to give resistances to your allies when the enemy is engaging, right? So how can you do both? You can't do both. You can't stop the enemy. You can't go deep into the enemy and stop them while at the same time standing inside your Zerg to, to be able to channel your, your demon armor. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Judy helmet, I, I like it. It's fine. It's good. Um, and and this is the mercenary shoes. I I don't I don't think they're great, but I understand why people run them. I think they are not good for teaching you positioning. Okay, it, it allows you to get away with it allows you to get away with um, with bad positioning, and so it makes it harder for you to actually learn good positioning. Okay, but that's a whole conversation. Uh, for another time all right but essentially mercenary shoes not very good but you know if you feel like you absolutely need them then uh, i i i get i guess i guess you should run it yo yeah it was a yeah you know so i'm engaged here this was a no 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 all right, so his Zerg's engaging and he's using the time to be able to walk in. That's beautiful, right? As a disengaged tank, you don't want to overextend, but at the same time, you want to use moments like these where your Zerg is engaging. You know the enemy's not going to go and engage at the same exact time. I mean, it happens, but that's rare, right? So if your Zerg is engaging, then you know you're pretty safe at least for a couple seconds to walk through that choke and not get pummeled in one second. How about you? Get like it. Now, you see what he's doing right here? I, be, uh, this, I love this. I love this right now. Look at how he pre selects his w and then cancels it because he decides not to use it and then and then he actually uses it that's beautiful so many people just go and click and automatically just use okay don't just automatically use if you actually see something change then cancel don't 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 waste something you don't need to waste what see how he pre-selected it there and then he canceled it kept walking and then he used it how about now he realizes, okay, that is a good spot. Let me do it then, right? He's being patient. That's actually a very good sign. So now they're coming in. Now this is now this is impatient, okay? Using the E right after is impatient. Why? Because he knows that his enemy is going to have to go through here. All of these guys are going to have to go through there. So if he just waits one second and lets them walk into his circle and then pops his E, it would be a lot better than using it right now. And now he pops right back, right? He pops right back using his boots. Okay. Um, I don't know why. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know why. I think he felt like he was in danger or something, and maybe he was. But he has his gig up, right? There, there, there's no reason why he wasted his boots there. There's no reason. He also still has a judicator helmet on, so he can still use that. So he should have stayed up there, honestly, like still fighting. Now, so he comes up, <clears throat> he comes up and uses his, his, his hood here, uh, uh, so, sorry, his helmet here, right? Now, the problem with it is that, yeah, he's fine. He's going to get these guys here. But had he walked a little further, he could have gotten the guys in the back as well. Also, the problem is that there's only a little, a few guys engaging. And I want you guys to pay attention. You don't, as a disengaged tank, you don't have to stop every single one of your enemy engages. You really don't, Okay. Only stop them if they're going to hit your Zerg. And here, like, these guys, who are they going to hit? Like, okay, look at this. Tank, 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 right? Uh, this guy is, uh, I don't know what he is. Maybe a tank, probably a tank. And you're a tank, right? So who are you, who are they going to hit? They're just going to hit a bunch of tanks. Who cares? 
let them hit a bunch of tanks. It's fine. Don't waste your cooldowns because you got you 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 nobody's actually in danger. These tanks can survive. So now they're they're starting to come in more and he could he you know he has no cooldowns. Now they're coming in more, he has no cooldowns. He pops his gig. Why? Not because he wants to stay close to the enemy and like screw them up, right? But he pops his gig so that he can pop his guardian armor and go and help out with the guardian armor. It's like, no, man, if you just cycle your cooldowns better, you'll have things to stop this engage and you can use your gig in order to do that, right? Like there, demon armor just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense, man. It's magic, it's magic, it's magic. Five, four, three, two, one. You choke, you choke, you choke, you choke. So right now the enemy's engaging, he gets bought back, none of that matters. He goes right back, he's using the Q on the corner, that's beautiful. I explained that earlier, right? Using it on a corner, that's beautiful. He steps up and immediately backs up. Right, that dancing, remember I was explaining that dancing? I don't mind it though, he wasn't full HP and he doesn't have his gig. He also doesn't have his shoes. His shoes is a defensive, so he doesn't have anything. All right, so I want, I want to explain something to you guys. You see the tanks, how they're encroaching, they're getting closer and closer, and there's a healer there, right? Like, his Zerg is, the enemy Zerg is kind of inching up more and more. That usually means that they're getting ready to have a push, okay? Now, not always, not always, but at least it means that you should try to, like, at least pay more attention right now, just because you should be waiting for that engage. It should be coming soon. Now they they kind of backed off, but look, he's getting he's coming up here and, and take a look. This is one thing a lot of tanks don't ever do, and you guys should do it more. Just walk up into the enemy a little bit and then walk right out. Why? Because you want to assess their position. Look at that. We just got a lot of value out of him just poking up a little bit, right? Now we see his Zerg, the enemy Zerg is all the way up here and down here, and there's kind of a, a gap in between, right? So that probably means that they have two flanks, two fronts. And it also means that this front is playing a little bit farther forward. And these guys over here by this wall are inching very, very close to the point where it looks like they're gonna try to push. Right. So if, if you're looking at this information, then you start to think, where do I want to stop? So you can stop this group on the north or you can stop the main group or you can stop the group that's going to run by this little tower thing. Right. Either way, you should start making your decisions. Where should I stop the enemy? Make those decisions before the enemy actually swings at you because you don't want to make rash decisions. Making the decision now when you have time and everything's calm is better. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Look at that. He pre did it and then he launched the W, right? Oh, no. So there, he's snare charged a bunch of people because it looked like they were going to engage. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I don't think they, I think that was just like a bait kind of thing, but I don't blame him. Uh, it, better safe than sorry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't hit right. Now he pops his silence. It's not perfect, but you know what? It's not bad, right? He has a low cooldown and he he's, he's ensuring that he's going to silence like. 10 people here, right? Like, look at all these people he silenced, right? I don't mind it too much. Now, what he shouldn't do, definitely shouldn't do, is use that Judy Helm, because then he'll have nothing. Now, he used he used his boots to get out. I mean, I think he just got scared. He didn't have to do that. Nice. Now the enemy's gonna counter engage. You know what I would do? I would I would walk way the fuck down southeast. I don't I don't want nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. You wanna know why? Because my guys didn't even cross this choke, so they're not overextended. 
And on top of that, on top of the fact that my Zerg is not overextended, I don't have any defensives up. So fuck that. I don't want to go up there and die. Right? So just get the hell out of the way. Get out of the way. Okay? Like, I tell you guys, be useful, but be useful when it's important. Don't just try to be using skills for no reason and try to, like, waste things, right? Just listen. If you're going to go up there right now, you're not going to save much. I mean, there's not going to be much to save anyway. And you're probably going to end up dying because you don't have defenses. So he uses his Nair charge to try to like help his Zerg. I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind it as long as he keeps that E. Nope, he used the E instead. He should have he should have kept it. Now he does have his boots, right? So that's one defensive, but he has no other cooldowns. Nice, good shit, Easy, easy, ho ho ho. That's a good Q again, right in the corner. That snare charge is horrible. Like uh, uh, atrocious. Atrocious. Um, these are D-Tanks, right? And so what I assume he's trying to do is he's trying to stop the D-Tanks uh, from stopping his Zerg. Here's the problem. As a heavy mace, you're not going to stop enemy D-Tanks unless you use your E, okay? And and right here, it's like, okay, you can use your E and your, your, your W and your E, but then you have nothing to stop the enemy counter-engage. So this is not necessarily a good play. What? How about you? What's going on? What's going on? And he used his E, right? Boom. That's what I told you guys. He used his E. But it's like now the enemy's gonna engage and he he only has his Judy Helm, which is okay, but it's not it's not optimal. <laughs> he even used that too. I mean that See, this is what I'm telling you guys. Like you guys gotta take care of your, your cooldowns, man. Like, had he walked southwest, you see these guys are coming in. Had he walked southwest and used his Judy Helm down there, he would have been useful. But instead he uses it on these guys for no reason. And he wastes his, his his boots as well, his defensive. Yeah. That that that's an okay one. Why why is that one okay? It's next to a corner. Well, because there's not a lot of people up there. This one is better because they're gonna run through that corner. The north one, not so much. So here he got bopped back. Now his Zerg is in danger here. They extended, right? They extended. So what I would do here, I have my boots. I'd boot in and then because I have my gig just in case I need it, right? So I'd boot in and then get in position to stop the Southwest because this is a pretty, this, this is not a good spot for a Zerg. So instead he just chooses to walk and uses his gig, uses his guardian, right? Instead of just getting in position to try to stop the enemy down there. Sorry, not guardian, demon, demon, that's what I meant. I think they're getting flanked or something. Let me catch up on chat here. Um, Venerish says, uh, I assume he is on offensive heavy mace considering he has demon armor. He's not playing offensively though. So here's the thing. Heavy mace can be offensive and defensive, right? At the same time, like not not necessarily like a, um, you know, it's like oh no, you're only offensive, you're only defensive. No, because the cooldown is so low that you can actually do both. You can be offensive and defensive locus at the same time, uh, especially if you use pork pork omelet, which he's not using, but whatever. If he uses it, yeah, he can he can do both. Um, yeah, let's keep it going. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, now now he's being offensive right now, trying to snare charge these guys here. What? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? 
So he boots in. I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this. And the reason for it is because the enemy didn't fully engage. They they did engage, but not fully. Um, a lot of their guys didn't engage. And I don't know if that's because they suck or that's because they have two friends. Either way, um, he booted in. And I said earlier that was fine because he had his gig, but this time he doesn't. So now he has no defensives and he's inside the enemy. Uh, this is very big danger zone right here. Also, he's booting in. I don't know why. What's he trying to save? This guy? Like, don't die trying to save one guy unless that one guy is the caller. Because losing one guy to save one guy doesn't make sense. He silences. Uh, he could have silenced better if he silenced over here. Right? So just little position change and it would have been a big impact. Also, he should walk southwest and use that Judy Helm. He has it up. He doesn't walk southwest, but he does walk in a little bit west more. So he still gets more people in it. Look how many people he's getting in that in that Judy Helm. All these people interrupted, interrupted, right? And like the rest of them are just getting stunned and slowed, right? Like, well, slowed in like... um. Like they're trying to get to the clump as quickly as possible. It's going to take them an extra second, right? So they're going to be slower to hit their, their mark. Now, I don't, I don't like, listen, listen, there's a difference between bravery and stupidity. This is stupidity. Okay. Again, no gig, no boots to get out, right? The only... I guess safety he has is a snare charge because it, it kind of allows you to jump out of danger, right? If, if you absolutely need to, which I don't recommend it, but like, hey, if you got to survive, survive however you can, right? Um, but he's going to use his snare charge, so he's going to have nothing. So he's trying to go in to the enemy, but like he has literally nothing to support this move. So this is actually really, really dangerous. There's no reason to do this. Oh, he canceled it. I told you guys I don't watch the, all these videos 100%. I listen to them, but I don't watch them 100%. He canceled it. That was good. That was a that was going to be a really big mistake. So he gets he gets pulled in and instantly goes in. I love this. Now this, this is bravery, okay? Why? Because the enemy is engaging, all right? Now, the only problem that I do have here is that he didn't need to do this. And the reason for it is because only he and another tank got caught, okay? Now, if he got caught with a bunch of other people, then I would have just been like, oh my God, you're a God, right? But, but this was actually unnecessary. It was brave, it wasn't stupid like earlier, but but it was unnecessary either way, okay? So I like his reflex instinct to go and jump at the enemy as opposed to other people jumping away from the enemy, right? Most people do that, right? I, I, I respect it, I respect it, it's brave and it's good. Uh, but, you know, it could have been better because he just didn't need to do that because nobody was actually in danger. And now he, oh my God, I did it. I don't, I don't remember how this ended. He gets bucked back and he just gets fucking pummeled. Like, absolute, like that sucks. That's, uh, listen, listen, that's not his fault. That's the truth. Like, that's the truth. That's not his fault, right? Like, what the hell are the chances that he gets bedrocked exactly into where, like the club, like, my God, like that just sucks. All right. Um, let me see. I have a video. Um, I can show you guys a video. Because we're done. We're done with the two reviews. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And then I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys. I have a video. Oh, I didn't change the account. Hold on. I have a video on my, my personal channel where I do something similar. Maybe I can find it and show you guys. Uh, I was playing with Take Care at the time. And... We were doing. And by the way, if you guys have any questions, you guys can can ask them right now um, in the chat. Let me see. 
I named it like staying alive clip, something like that. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, I found it. All right, I'm going to show it to you guys. So. All right, so this is when I was in Take Care. This was like season 16, season 15, something around there. Um, this was like a, a, a huge fight. I don't even remember who we were fighting. I, I guess we were fighting uh, Press to Play and Alpacas. I think they were allied at the time. Um, and so anyway, so... Uh, I'm running heavy mace, I'm running adjudicator armor, uh, hellion hood, and guardian boots. And so this is what happens. Listen, front one look north. They're engaging north side, dude. Support the hill, support the hill, support the hill. See how, like, I get caught in it, right? So I'll, I'll show you guys again. So I get caught in it right here, right? And that's that's a caught in with everybody else. North? They're engaging north side, dude. See that? Boom. And now they're instantly dropping on us from the north. And my instinct is to jump at the enemy. Why? Because... If I jump at the enemy, I'm jumping out of the clump, right? But it also, if I jump at the enemy, I'm also going to hopefully be able to cancel their engage. So that way I can help my guys save themselves. I could just jump back and be safe, but, you know, that's not my job. I'm a disengaged tank, so. So I jump in, right? And I'm getting I'm getting real low, right? I jump in and uh, and, and look, I don't have my, 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 my defensives. I, I don't. I don't have my defensives, but I'm just doing this because I have to because that was a big clump, right? Support the, support the hill, support the hill, support the hill. I go, I silence them here. Now they're like, I'm at 90 HP. I'm 1 HP, holy fuck. Yo. I'm, seven, I'm, thir I'm 30 HP. 3, 2, 1. 26 HP, 3, uh, 3 HP. Oh, that's 8. It's 8 HP. I'm at 8 HP, guys. I don't I don't need more. I, I, I don't need more. I just need 8 HP. Everyone can rough. Everyone can rough here. Everyone can. You have to wait in You have to wait in north. 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 Damage north. Any it's like, alright, I'm safe. I'm good. I survived, I think. Come back up, come back up, come back up, come back up, come back up. You guys need to bite me. Come back up. And now here comes the next blade. Come back up, come back up. Same thing, right? Come back up, come back up, come back. So this time I just pop a smoke bomb and I and I get out of there. Right? Why a smoke bomb? Because the majority of these guys on the west, they are they're uh, melee DPS. Okay, that's what they were running. I, I just remember that that's what they were running, right? So they were running mini DPS. So if I smoke bomb, yeah, I'm smoke bombing my guys, but I'm also smoke bombing them. Okay, so they, they, then they won't be able to use their ease. So that, that's why. So I, I I pop a gig and I smoke bomb and I get out of there. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. After that, now I go in and I'm actually going to help try to get this kill. West, look west. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Listen, 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 we're good. Hold, hold, hold this, hold this, hold this. Point four. Oh, look at that. I don't know what that is. Anyway, let me go back. I think that was the infographic show. That shit's sick, man. I watch that shit sometimes. All right. That's it. We are done. I appreciate you guys. Let me know if you guys have the questions in the chat. Oh, no. Hold on. I fucked it up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. There we go. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, Veneracer says the problem is he's using all three abilities. Judy Helm, WE all together rather than using WE for offensive and Judy Helm for defensive. I mean, yeah, he can use them like that. Yeah, he can use he can use some for offensive, some for defensive, definitely. But um, at the end of the day, I think what's more important to understand is simply don't use everything at the same time, right? You can use the Judy Helm as offensive or defensive. You can use the E or the W as offensive or defensive, right? Um, the, the thing is, is just don't use everything at the same time because then the enemy's kind of, it's gonna screw you over with their counter engages, right? Um, at the same time, know when you gotta pull back. Don't just, don't just try to be a hero all the time being at the front when you just don't have any defensives up because the moment somebody, you know, gets a, a good clap on you, you're gonna die. I don't care if you have a beef sandwich on, you're gonna die anyway, okay? So, so yeah, anyway, that's it for today. You're welcome, Yamis, I, I appreciate you watching, man. I appreciate you guys. All right. Um, make sure you guys follow if you like the content subscribe if you want to again you don't have to the content is free uh, I will upload this in the YouTube channel um, hopefully by the end of the day if not by tomorrow um, the YouTube link is down below in Twitch you can scroll down it's going to be down below you can you can you can subscribe there for the YouTube uh, the Discord is also there and uh, the next video the next uh, the next uh, stream is going to be on on Friday and we're doing range DPS, all right? 
So the same series that we've been doing the, 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 the last week, we're going to continue it this week. We're going to be looking at the range DPS this time, all right? So we, we got, you know, Brimstone, Siege, Bow, that kind of stuff, all right? So it's going to be... It's going to be a good one. It's going to be fun. It's going to be some of the OG weapons that, that we haven't talked about in a while. Um, and some of the ones that are coming back because Siege Bow is uh, apparently OP right now. So, all right. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.